you and I were talking the other day, and I said, I don't have the need to be loved by strangers. And you were saying, yeah. oh, my God, really? Because I do. <laughs> yes. Do you have the need for people to know you're successful? Because you do a lot of things that people probably don't know. You're right, Dr. Phil. I do so much um, all the time, but I'm not like someone who brags about it or who posts about it. Like I sometimes look at my life and I'm like, God, you did so much stuff this week. So many cool TV things, met so many people. Why aren't you posting about this to share it? I think I do it because I need, it's for my parents kind of. I want them to be proud of me. I'm always telling my, my parents are kind of like my, my, the ones that I brag to th- about to, to about these things. I want them to be proud of me. I think getting on TV was a way to get their attention in a way that I maybe didn't feel I got as a child. I always, my mom watched TV a lot. So I was like, okay, I'll just, I'll just get up there to get you to like care about what's going on in my life. Like you do the housewives. So I think that was a, a reason for it. How did you get your first TV thing? I auditioned for Last Comic Standing when I was a senior in college. I had been doing stand-up comedy for four years. I start. I first went on stage my freshman year, and then I just started going to comedy clubs and doing open mics and just really became obsessed with it and thought, this is what I'm going to do. Um, and then my friends, Last Comic Standing, that show on NBC was auditioning in Chicago. I was going to school in Kansas, and me and a bunch of like, you know, 30-something-year-old male comics rented a van and drove to Chicago, waited out in the snow. And I went on, st- I knew that I was bad and shouldn't be competing on Last Comic Standing. Like I knew I was two, I was two or three years in like this. No, I always knew my place. I was never like, give me a chance. I just, I knew it was going to, I told my dad, I need financial support for seven years. Give me seven years and then you can take it away. But like, if you can, I got, cause you can't get good in three years. But I auditioned, and all I wanted to hear was them being like, you're young, but you have promise, which is what they said. But then I was, wa- I was walking off the stage. I don't know who this girl was. I was walking off the stage, and one of the judges said to the other, I really liked her. And then another one goes, I mean, I could be convinced. And I just, I heard that. I ran back up on stage, and I said, do you want to hear another joke? And they were like, okay. And then I told another joke, and they go, okay, Nikki, we'll see you tonight. So I went to the competition in Chicago, and then from there I got asked to go to L.A. and be on Last Comic Standing semifinals, and that was my first like TV thing. Were your parents proud? Oh, my God, yes. They are proud of everything. I mean, they're, they're proud. They're so, the, the, the biggest thing now is I'm talking to Dr. Phil. I'm on his podcast, and I got to hang out with him at the Kelly Clarkson show. They celebrate all of my all of my little wins and they're always so excited about, you know, I'm on TV all the time because I just do stuff all the time and they get so mad when they're like, you didn't tell us you were going to be on this tonight. And uh, I just forget sometimes, but I did have that realization recently of like, what am I, what, what's going to be my reason for doing stuff when they're gone? Cause it still is that like, look at this thing I drew, put it on the refrigerator. Uh, I really am. I recently told my boyfriend, I go, you got to start like watching everything I do and telling me how beautiful and talented I am because I, I, that's really a reason I do this is for my loved ones to <laughs> feel, get to, you know, to celebrate me. Well, that's not unhealthy though. The fact that yeah. the people in our lives that we want them to be proud of us is not unhealthy. Yeah. Okay, good. You don't think it is, do you? No, I just feel like, you know, there's a part of me that thinks if I didn't have that going on, what would it? I, I, yeah, I guess there's a part of me of of what would I be bringing to the table? I don't have kids. My sister has kids. Like this is my thing, and that I got to keep it coming. And and but I also they're so talented and funny that it was the greatest thing that I could do was creating this reality show that was born of me living at home and being at my parents and being like, what do what am I gonna do next? And I'm like these these guys are hilarious. I was putting them on my Instagram and everyone was like more EJ and Julie. So I'm so grateful now that I am in a position where I was like, okay, let's do a show and and E bought it. And now my parents are going to get to, my dad's always been a performer and never really pursued it because of just wanting to be able to support a family and not take on this risky business. But now he's going to be, people are going to see how talented he is. It's very exciting. You did eight episodes, right? Yes, yes. So describe um, it and tell people what they're going to see. Well, May 1st on E, you're going to see a two-episode premiere of Welcome Home, Nikki Glazer, which is um, about me moving back home to St. Louis. And it's it's not going to be filled with the kind of maybe drama that you want and the, the you know, the fighting and the, the those explosive episodes. But you're going to get real honesty and just a family that loves each other, that is 
uh, figuring out how to communicate and uh, me who is trying to begin a relationship again with her ex-boyfriend who also moved back to St. Louis at the same time. So it's very interesting that this show kind of, it wasn't something I orchestrated. It really, the camera showed up and I said, okay, well, this is my life right now. This isn't kind of the show I pitched, but this is what's going on with me right now. Okay. And, and I really, I made it, I did everything I could to make it as an honest representation of my life as possible. So what you're seeing is really my life and the state of my room and everything else. <laughs> you were telling me the other day, you said, you thought, okay, I need to clean up my room. And you thought, nope, no, not going to do it. No. I think that so much of my lack of self-esteem as a child, I was obsessed with pop culture, obsessed with celebrities. I would have done someone's celebrities could have done such a service for me if they would have just shown their imperfections a little bit more. And so I feel it is my duty to show it like it really is because there's nothing that makes you feel better than seeing someone's bathroom that's a mess that you might project some perfection onto and go, well, at least I'm not that. Or, oh my gosh, she does that too. I'm just trying to give the gift that I really could have used as a young girl who just judged myself so harshly and continue to do so. Um, and so I, it was really an experiment in me trying to put myself out there in a way that might make me cringe, you know, at times being like, oh, come on, you, you couldn't have put on a different, you couldn't have put on some under eye concealer there. But it's, it's a test uh, of me being okay with myself and me being okay that people might not be okay with the person I'm putting out there. But I love her. She's trying her best and she means well. And I, I believe that for myself now. I don't have this sneaking suspicion that I'm a bad person like I always had before. I think I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty well-intentioned. <laughs> So if you had to say, what are the five things you're most proud of yourself about you as a person? What would you say? Oh, I would definitely say um, spreading authenticity, uh, being really and, and helping my podcast fans really get honest about their selves. I would say conquering my eating disorder, being, being very generous with my uh, opportunities and wealth that I have been so lucky to have and... Um, just being, uh, and, and, and being curious and being able to be wrong. I think as comedians, a lot of times we just, you know, nobody can take a joke. I'm just joking. And I think that I, I like that I have gotten to a place where I can embrace that I get it wrong a lot of times. Like I am not giving Ted talks. Like I'm not presenting facts and I'm okay if someone gets offended by something I say, cause I look to, learn and and to become a better person and and make mistakes and i just hope that you know i can be forgiven for those and not canceled and just like you know so i think that my biggest accomplishment though is uh really overcoming my my mental issues of like l my low self-esteem and and being open to new tools but honestly my eating disorder getting that being two years over it'll be two years uh, April 26th of not starving myself, not uh, binging, not exercising for to burn calories. Do Being able to say that is, I mean, I suffered with an eating disorder for 20 years and never once went a, a week without starving myself or overeating to the point where I was sick. And so now that I, if I can do it, anyone can do it. And so I think that's my biggest accomplishment because it's opened up a whole new world to me just in these past two years of that. And I think, um, yeah, that's that's probably been my biggest one. And it's not one I really talk about that much because it's so personal and so messy. And But um, I just, I like to say that because I always thought when I would hear people talk about recovering from eating stuff, like, no, theirs is recoverable. Mine's not. I'm special. And I'm telling you, anyone out there struggling with any kind of eating issues it you can recover because you're not you are special but you're not special you're not uniquely terminal like of you're the one that's not going to get cured you can there's it, it's possible 